February 18th, St. Simeon, Bishop and Martyr. St. Simeon was a nephew both to St. Joseph and to the Blessed Virgin, and therefore cousin to our Savior. We cannot doubt but that he was an early follower of Christ, and that he received the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost with the Blessed Virgin and the Apostles. When the Jews massacred St. James the Lesser, his brother Simeon reproached them for their actions. St. James, Bishop of Jerusalem, being put to death in the year 62, 29 years after our Savior's resurrection, the apostles and disciples met at Jerusalem to appoint him a successor. They unanimously chose St. Simeon, who had probably before assisted his brother in the government of that church. In the year 66, in which St. Peter and Paul suffered martyrdom at Rome, the civil war began in Judea by the seditions of the Jews against the Romans. The Christians in Jerusalem were warned by God of the impending destruction of that city. They therefore departed out of it the same year before Vespian, Nero's general and afterwards emperor, entered Judea and retired beyond the Jordan to a small city called Pella, having St. Simeon at their head. After taking and burning of Jerusalem, they returned thither again and settled themselves amidst its ruins, till Adrian afterward entirely raised it. The church here flourished, and multitudes of Jews were converted by the great number of prodigies and miracles wrought in it. Vespasian and Domitian had commanded all to be put to death who were of the race of David. St. Simeon had escaped their searches, but certain heretics and Jews accused the saint as being both of the race of David and a Christian. The holy bishop was condemned to be crucified. After having undergone the usual tortures during the several days, which, though 120 years old, he suffered with so much patience that he drew on him a universal admiration. He died in the year 107. He must have governed the Church of Jerusalem about 43 years. We bear the name of Christians, but are full of the spirit of the world, and our actions are infected with the poison of the world. We secretly seek ourselves, even when we flatter ourselves that God is our only aim, and whilst we undertake to convert the world, we suffer it to pervert us. When shall we begin the study to crucify our passions and to die to ourselves, that we may lay a solid foundation of true virtue and establish its reign in our hearts?